Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and what we're going to be doing is going over the GTX GeForce 1650 Super, what in my opinion is the very best graphics card that you could get right around the $160 range. It ranges anywhere from $160 to $190 depending on the model you get. It is the smaller version with one fan, but I'm going to be talking about that more in just a sec. So going over the build of this card, overall it is a fairly good looking card, especially if you have a black system, you're going to throw it in a small computer build. Essentially any situation it's going to be fine. Unless if you have it in a big case like mine and it's just a little tiny thing sitting in there and it may seem kind of out of place. They do have larger GeForce GTX 1650 graphics cards with two fans that may fit your PC or your look of the PC a little bit better but this is what I decided to go with. So going over some of the features you can see here on the side it has a 6 pin supplementary power connector. Going around to the actual face we have one display port, an HDMI port, and a DVI-D. I decided to keep these little rubber protectors on because I have no intention on using the other two as I use the display port connector on mine. Flipping it around to the top side you can see right there is the actual graphics processing unit. This card will give you 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. It runs off the DirectX 12 interface. Using this card, chances are you're not going to need a heavy duty power supply as it requires a minimum of 350 watts. Because of the heat sink, this graphics card will be taking up two slots on the back of your computer. Installation of the graphics card is fairly straightforward. All you do is plug it on into one of your PCI Express ports on your motherboard, screw it on to the case, and then you plug in your supplemental 6-pin power connector. Now that we took a look at some of the specs and build of this graphics card, let's go ahead and throw some benchmarking at it and see what we get. So the first thing I did to test the performance of this graphics card is open up the benchmarking software superposition and I ran four different tests to see the performance at various stress levels. So first I did a 720p test for low settings and it performed remarkably well as well any graphics card that's been made in the last couple years should perform. Had a minimum FPS of 124, it had a max FPS of 224, and it sat at an average of 181. Next was the 1080p medium settings, which seem to be where this graphics card performs its best, with a minimum of 58, max of 82, and a average FPS of 70 frames per second, which seems to be the sweet spot. Next, we ran this on high settings 1080p with a minimum FPS of 41, a max of 58, and an average of 49, which is still very playable. And then 1080p Ultra is where we start to run into some trouble with a max FPS of a mere 18 frames per second, averaging out at 17 frames with a minimum of 16 frames per second. All the tests seem to have a relative consistent 70 degrees Celsius. Now I did run some of these tests back to back, so that could have a factor. Also, during these tests I was running a screen recording software with a very low resolution, so that could have cut into some of the FPS, especially the 1080p Ultra. But overall this graphics card seems to perform relatively well at medium to high settings. And that about wraps that up. If you are interested in purchasing this graphics card, I'll have a link in the description, so it helped me out if you use that. Uh, I would recommend it, like I said, if you are a budget gamer, you're just getting into gaming, and you need something to be able to run everything, even though you may not be able to go into those ultra settings. For most 1080p gaming on medium to high, this is going to be perfectly fine. So like I said, thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Have a great day, and goodbye.